99% of people who use moss pores for plants fail and quit because they don't understand the reality and practicality of using moss pores. To show you how to avoid the most common traps and understand the things that can help you to learn to use moss poles, I'll get you and others who may have struggled to use moss poles before to unleash all your beginner questions at me so you can discover what's holding you back and help you become experts at using moss poles faster. Trust me, you don't want to miss this epic Q&A session. I'd like to know where you get your moss poles. Well, I make most of the moss poles that I own. Because I use a lot of moss poles, I grow a lot of my plants on moss poles, it actually works out cheaper for me to make my own moss poles. I've done a very brief cost analysis of buying a pre-made moss pole and making a moss pole myself. And generally, it I find that making my own moss pole costs me about $5, maybe even less because I buy all my materials in bulk. Whereas if I had to buy a pre-made moss pole, that's going to cost me three, four, five, even more times than that if I just made my own. So for my purposes, making a moss pole makes sense. But if you only have a few moss poles and you don't intend to start doing all sorts of things like I do, extensions and things like that, it probably makes more sense for you to just buy a pre-made moss pole. Aside from cost, I'm also able to tailor my moss pole to exactly the way I want it. When you buy a pre-made moss pole, it is what it is. You get what you get and you can't complain. Whereas when I make my own moss poles, I can make it flat, I can make it thicker, I can make it rounder, I can even make a moss wall if I choose to. So I do have a lot of creative license when I'm making my own. So if you are wanting to do a few different things apart from just having your normal shaped moss pole, I highly encourage you to make your own. Do you put a buffer between the lecker and the pole media so that they don't mix? I get this question a lot. So I'll use this plant as an example. This plant is growing in Lekka, going up a moss pole. In the moss pole is a mixture of sphagnum moss and my tree fern fiber, and this is an organic product. So in theory, I don't want this to be mixing with my Lekka. So the question is, do I actually have something that separates the two? In order to answer that question, I'm firstly going to show you how I make my moss pole to make sure that my sphagnum moss on tre or tree fern fiber or whatever substrate you decide to use in your pole is not mixing with your lecker. And then I'm gonna show you how I pot up a plant that I'm putting up on a moss pole living in Lekka. We're gonna make a moss pole that's got a plastic sheet back because this is my absolute favorite these days. It does keep the moisture in a lot longer than the normal moss pole, so I love to use the plastic sheet back. So I've pre-cut my plastic sheet back and this is my wire mesh over here. You can see that the wire mesh is actually quite a bit, fair bit longer than my plastic sheet. This is where the plant is going to be. I've also put some cable ties on the inside of that plastic sheet, and that's what's going to hold the metal rod a little bit later. Okay, so I'm now going to start filling this with my tree fern fiber sphagnum moss combination mixture. I like to use this because it's very easy to keep moist, well, not very easy. It's a lot easier to keep moist than just using sphagnum moss alone because that tree fern fiber does not become hydrophobic like the sphagnum moss does. So it's easier to just get that nutrient solution or water going in there. Okay, so I think that is looking good. And I'll just start to close that up with my cable ties. As I put my cable ties, it's important to note that I'm actually putting the head bit of the table cable tie at the back and it's not protruding at the front because once we cut off that redundant cable tie, this bit actually does become a little bit sharp and that can damage your leaves. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this quickly. Okay, now here is where the important part comes. And this is where I do my little magic to actually create that separation between the sphagnum moss or the substrate that's held within my moss pole and the rest of that, which is where my plant is going to be and that's where the lecker is going to be. What I do is I actually fold this over, right? I fold that over 
And what that does is it actually keeps the sphagnum moss in place. It keeps it on that side of things and it doesn't fall on that end. I grab my cable tie and I put it through the holes that I had made earlier in my plastic sheet. But if you're not using a plastic sheet and you're just using wire mesh, you can still do that with a wire mesh only. And I then close off that cable tie and my wire is absolutely secure. So when I do that, you can see that that sphagnum moss is actually not falling out. And that is how I create that barrier and that protects my lecker. So I don't have my sphagnum moss falling into my lecker. All right, so I've put another one there just for added security. And that there is my moss pole. Pretty, pretty easy to assemble. Doesn't take a long time at all. And when you've got those principles in place, you know exactly what you're doing. You know how you're gonna stop that moss from going into your lecker. And that is it. And that's what it looks like at the back. So I'll just cut off those bits of cable tie there. Next question is, do you fill the bottom of the moss pole with sphagnum moss or with lecker? So that person means this bit of the moss pole, do I fill that up with lecker or with sphagnum moss? So the answer is no, I do not fill that up with lecker and I certainly do not fill it up with sphagnum moss because if you fill this portion up with sphagnum moss, that sphagnum moss is going to remain moist forever. As long as you've got a reservoir, it's actually going to suck up all the nutrient solution in your reservoir because wherever there's sphagnum moss, it just sucks up all the moisture. It's going to do that. And the other problem with doing that is that once that sphagnum moss is very moist, it is going, it's sitting next to your roots and those roots are going to be constantly moist and run the risk of getting root rot. So that's the major reason I don't put sphagnum moss at the end of that. Now I know a lot of people who grow their plants in soil actually make a nice cylinder that goes all the way to the bottom and that helps with stability and they pack that up with soil or potting mix, I don't do that because I grow my plants in lecker. And the reason I don't make a nice cylinder and I put my lecker in there is I tried, I used to do it before, it's really, really difficult to get that lecker to stop coming out of the, of the holes of the wire mesh. It just keeps coming out and coming out and it's just really, really hard. It's not as easy to pack back in as it is with potting mix. So I don't even bother now. This is how I do it. I just leave that bit there. I'll pot up, got this plant here. It is an anthurium. This is my anthurium polyshystem. How gorgeous is this beauty? She is now got these area roots and she loves to climb. So I'm gonna pot up this plant and show you exactly how I put up a plant in Lekka on a moss pole. And the first thing I will do though is I've got this metal rod and this metal rod is actually what helps me provide stability for my moss poles that are living in Lekka. It's, you probably don't need it so much if you're growing your plants in soil because the soil is a lot the soil is a lot heavier than Lekka. And I know a lot of people think that potting mix is not as heavy as Lekka. They hear clay and they think it's heavy. Lekka is quite light. So it's a bit difficult to keep a moss pole steady in the Lekka. So I like to have the metal rods in there. And that's where those cable ties that I put in when I was making my moss poles come into play. So I just slide my metal rod in there. And I just fasten those cable ties a little bit just to make sure that my metal rod is actually firmly attached to my moss pole. What I do now is I get my pot. This is the pot that I'm gonna put my plant in and I put it there because this is what's going to show me at what level I need this moss pole. So I need the moss pole to be flush with the pot like that. At this point, it's still too high. So I'm gonna move my metal rod higher up and yeah, that's too high. But that's also because my wire mesh is a lot longer. So I can just fold it over like that. And there we go. That's exactly where I need it to be. And that's good. So yeah, okay. I just make that into a little bit of a cylindrical shape because I want it to sit nicely against that pot. That's not a cylinder. Yeah. Right, okay. That is good. And because I've got the position where I want my metal rod to be, I just tighten those cable ties even more 
so there isn't too much movement. I put that aside. I get my plant. I'll reuse that lecker. There's no need to not use it. Look at that. Such gorgeous root system on that plant. So what I'm going to do now is position my plant on the moss pole before I put it up in the pot. When you're growing a plant in lecker, I find it's easier to actually position the plant on the moss pole before I put the pole in there, as opposed to people who are growing their plants in soil. When you're growing in soil, it's really easy to just swoosh the potty mix or the soil to one side and do what you need to do. Lecker is not as forgiving, so I like to do that before. So for this plant, I'm gonna use some little butterfly clips and adjust, that just positions it exactly where I need it to be, like so. And those area roots are going to be positioned right next to the moss and will start growing in there. But what the other thing that positioning your plant before you put it in the pot does is you can see where you need your roots to be. So I want my roots to be completely away from the sphagnum moss or from the media because I don't want them to get root rot as I discussed before. So this is the position that I'm going for. That's what I'm looking for. So at this point, I've got my pot and I will put that in. So just move that to the side. That's exactly where I need that to be. My roots are over there, my plant is over there, and I just fill that up with lecker. So once I've done the front, I then turn it around. I turn it to the back. At the back, I currently have this space over here that actually doesn't have any lecker in there. And I put my lecker there. And what that does, obviously, is we want our roots to be in contact with the lecker, but it also provides more stability to the moss pole. So just shake that a bit to make sure that the lecker is settled in. And when you do, you'll find that you've got more space to put Lekka in. That is my Anthurium polyshystem. I'm really happy with the way that is sitting. It looks absolutely fantastic. That's the reservoir. I'll put that in there and this plant is now going to continue growing up that pole. How often should you replace the moss inside the pole? Well, personally, I've actually never had to replace the moss per se, because your plant is constantly changing, it's constantly growing, and so your moss pole is actually going to be evolving as your plant evolves. So of course, as your plant is growing up the moss pole, you're going to, it's going to reach the top, like some of my plants back there. It's going to reach the top, and you're either extending your moss pole or you're chopping up your moss pole. Invariably, something is going to happen with your moss pole before you actually need to change it. Of course, sphagnum moss doesn't last forever. It is an organic product. It does degrade and probably takes about four or five years, maybe more, I'm not sure. I've actually never had to deal with that issue because like I said, my plants are constantly evolving. So I'm constantly tinkering with my moss poles. The only thing I've done personally is to actually change the medium that's inside my pole. So for a pole that's just had sphagnum only, I've replaced that with a sphagnum moss and tree fern fiber combination. Just take a look at the video that I've linked above. I did that with my Epipremnum pinnatum. But apart from that, I mean, that's the only thing I can see that you'd be doing with your moss that's in your pole. Maybe another reason you'd want to change it over, for example, is if it's just completely infested with algae, there's so much algae in there and you just feel that you need to change that moss, which you can do very, very carefully, but you don't have to replace the moss because it degrades per se. Next question, where can I buy moss? In Australia, you can buy moss anywhere. Most people just walk into their local Bunnings and the sphagnum moss readily available. So we're lucky in that way. And it's not just Bunnings. You can buy it in basically any nursery, any plant store. Most people stock sphagnum moss at the moment. It's very popular. In other countries, I'm not too sure exactly where you would get it. It would probably be similar garden centers, garden shops, shops that sell plants probably would be stocking sphagnum moss. You can also get sphagnum moss online. You can get sphagnum moss on Amazon, whatever online place you've got in your country. I should mention that you need to be very careful when you're purchasing sphagnum moss. Only buy from reputable brands because there's all sorts of weird brands that I've seen out on eBay, no label, no nothing. Just 
be really careful what kind of moss it is. There is good moss and there is bad moss. Some sphagnum moss is just full of sticks. There's actually very little moss in there and maybe not ethically sourced. So there's some considerations you need to think about when you're thinking about where to get your sphagnum moss. And the best way to circumvent all these issues is just to buy a well-known brand that's been well-researched that a lot of other people use. Then you know the quality is good and you know that it's ethically sourced. Next question, have you tried tree fern fiber in a moss pole in a Leka setup? Indeed, I have. These are two poles that I made with tree fern fiber only as a substrate. This is my Epipremnum Shangri-La living on that pole. And this is my Philodendron White Princess. I think this is the first plant that I ever put up on a tree fern fiber pole. I've got the video where I show you how I make this particular tree fern fiber pole and pull up this plant in the link above. I love how she's going, but one thing I absolutely love is how you can see the area roots at the back of that pole. You can see how those roots have really just gone in there and are just looking absolutely fantastic. This plant I think is really loving it in there. She's growing well. The, these leaves are a little bit smaller. We have been in winter in Melbourne. My lighting situation has not been the best but I expect that she's going to take off very, very soon. This is my Epipremnum Shangri-La, also living in a tree fern fiber pole. Loving life. The thing I absolutely adore about using tree fern fiber as a substrate is it's so easy to keep moist. The minute you spray any water or nutrient solution in there, it's just completely absorbed and it doesn't become hydrophobic like sphagnum moss. If you let sphagnum moss dry out, it's really a pain to actually rehydrate, but this just goes in so, so easily and just makes that plant care so much easier. Where can I buy some moss poles that look like yours if I don't have time to make them? When you talk about moss poles like mine, I assume you're talking about one like this one that has the plastic sheet back. There are lots and lots of pre-made moss pole options these days. The world is just your oyster. People have really taken the design of the moss pole and have just run with it. You've got 3D print options. You've got pre-made ones that are exactly like this one where you've got the plastic sheet provided for you, the wire mesh provided. You've even got the cable ties provided. All you need to do is get sphagnum moss and put it all together. You can get those. You can get little one piece ones where it's just a plastic sheet and you just have to fold it in a specific way and a voila, you've got a moss pole. You've also got one of my favorites like this one. This is a Tinker Garden. And what I really love about this one is it's got a little plastic cup at the top so you can fill that cup with your water or nutrient solution and that waters your moss pole and this is a 3d design and it's it's beautiful the options are absolutely diverse and you just need to pick and choose which one you want or what you want to spend your money on but you need to think about a few things when you're making the decision to purchase a pre-made moss pole does it fit your aesthetic? Does it look the way you want it to look? Is there option for you to actually extend your moss pole once the plant reaches the top of the pole? How steady is that moss pole going to be when you extend it? Is there an option for you to be able to attach a metal rod at the back to increase the stability of that moss pole? Do you want your moss pole to have a self-watering device? All these are things that you can think about and whatever you think about, there's someone else who's thought about it and has actually created a moss pole that suits that. So happy shopping options other than a moss pole. Something that doesn't require frequent watering of course, there are options that you can use. You don't have to use a moss pole. The only reason we use moss poles is because plants that have area roots that love to climb actually climb in nature and they climb on trees, they climb on all sorts of things. And as they climb, they derive nutrition and water from those structures that they're climbing in and they're getting closer to the sun and as they climb the stems get thicker and the leaves get bigger that's that's basically what climbing does so as long as a plant is climbing it's happy the only added thing that a moss pole provides is that you can actually provide water and nutrition through the moss so your plant is actually getting 
more nutrients and it gets bigger and grows faster than if it's growing on a substance that doesn't have nutrition. So if you're using something like a trellis, which you can use, if you're using something like a bamboo stick, if you're using something like a metal rod, your plant will climb. The leaves will get big. And I've seen plants Plants will just attach to anything. Aerial roots will attach to anything. If you leave your plant next to the wall, it will attach to the wall and it will start to climb. So as long as you're giving it a structure to climb onto, you can use that and your plant will climb. I've seen some poles with lecker as a medium. How would that even work? Look, I'm gonna stick my neck out here and say that using lecker as a medium in your moss pole does not work. It just doesn't. The only way it would work is if you're using pumps to actually get that nutrient solution from a reservoir and actually keep that LECA moist consistently all the time. And no, using a wick does not qualify. It does not, it does not work. How do I know that a wick won't work? Because I've tried it. I've actually made a pole that had lecker in it. I put like three wicks and those wicks were enmeshed in the lecker and they were in the nutrient solution. So the nutrient was going through the wick, going to the lecker. In theory, that was not enough to keep that lecker moist. That lecker was dry as anything. And because that lecker was dry, it was very, very difficult for my airy roots to actually grow into the lecker. And I found that it was just a complete waste of time. And I dismantled the whole thing because it wasn't working. The only successful lecker poles I've ever seen are ones that have a pump that's providing continuous moisture, continuous water to that lecker. If, you, if you're interested in seeing a pole that's got lecker, that's got pumps, this is one that CJ of Joyous Hoyas 808, I think, Joyous Hoyas, Joyous Hoyas, she loves Hoyas like I do. She made a lecker pole, at, she calls it a lecker tower, and she's got a pump that's bringing nutrient solution from the reservoir up to the lecker and that's just continuous. It's glorious. I would love to make something like that. Uh, yeah, it would be awesome. Maybe I will one day, but this is the only way I can see a lecker pole working. Otherwise, yeah, nah, it's not gonna work. I have a diaphragm matcha that's tall. It needs support and stakes don't really help. I was wondering if I could put it on a moss pole. It's been living in lecker for a little over a year. Ah. Uh, you, look, you can do anything you want. You can actually, you can put a moss pole if you want, but I don't think diaphragmatches actually have area roots. So you're not going to have roots actually attaching into the moss. So the only thing you're creating is almost like a glorified stake as it were. So maybe, I don't know, maybe I'd look into getting a more sturdy stake or a more sturdy trellis or something like that. But then I'd also love to see the picture of your diaphragmatcha. Actually, I've got a diaphragmatcha and a lot of the bottom leaves of my diaphragmatcha are gone. I now need to air layer it and so that I can chop it and start again so it starts to look nice and bushy again because it's really, really tall, but there's no leaves on there. So I would, yeah. Does your moss get moldy or oversaturated with water where it touches the lecca? I haven't had mold growing in my moss poles, but I have seen other people's moss poles be covered with mold. And I suspect the reason for this is because probably their sphagnum moss is already contaminated with mold. And because it's been given the right conditions to thrive, it does. And by right conditions, I mean the sphagnum moss is moist, but there's probably not as much airflow as you probably could have in there. So one of the ways you can prevent mold from going on your moss poles is to actually allow adequate ventilation between your poles or with your plants. So you can either do this by keeping a window open or having a fan going if you've got plants that are living on a moss pole. Another thing though, is to make sure you try and get reputable, you know, good brand sphagnum moss. I know some brands probably bit more notorious for mold than others. So if you get a good quality moss, you're probably not likely to have that problem if you are allowing great ventilation. 
does my moss get oversaturated? It doesn't get oversaturated because when I water my moss poles, I do allow a period for the moss pole to drain. So I let it sit for a few minutes, maybe 10, 20, 30, depending on what I'm doing. And I'll let that nutrient solution drain through the moss. That also means that I don't have my reservoir filling all the way up to the top because of the nutrient solution that's coming through my moss pole. So because of that, I don't have that over saturation at the interface between the moss and the leka because I my nutrient is not going all the way to the top of my leka. I hope that makes sense. Why is there algae in the moss pole? Is it okay if your moss starts to turn green with growth? I actually like it when I see that my moss pole is green with algae because that means I'm doing a good job. I'm taking care of my moss pole because algae spores are everywhere and all they need is the right conditions for them to seed. So the right conditions being food, water, light. If they've got these things, they're going to bloom. And these are all the things that our plants need to thrive as well. So if you've got a moss pole and you're taking care of it and you're adding moisture and you're adding nutrition and your plant is receiving a lot of light, invariably you are going to get algae growing on that moss because that algae is happy as well. In and of itself, the algae on your moss pole is not problematic. It's absolutely fine. It's not really going to be competing for nutrients with your plants. There's not so much of it. Most of the time, people don't like to see it. It's just an aesthetic thing. And if you don't like to see the algae, all you need to do is just take your moss pole outside or you can take it to a sink and just give it a good zap with a little bit of high pressure water. I tend to just put my hose on a jet spray and I'll hose it down and that algae is going to disappear. You could also try a solution of hydrogen peroxide, about 3% hydrogen peroxide, and just douse that algae and that should work as well. I've actually never tried to do that with hydrogen peroxide because I don't mind the algae. So I, I'm, I'm not too fussed with the fact that I've got algae growing on my moss poles. Does the algae harm the plant? Should I throw it and replace it or just flush it with water? So like I said before, the algae is not going to harm your plants at all. The Look, it's one of those things. People think, oh, it's going to compete for nutrients with my plants. Not necessarily so. And look, I have no way of proving this to you. All I know is that people say it doesn't. And I've noticed that my plants that have algae on them are really just fine. Unless you've got such a massive bloom of algae in there, unless there's so much algae in your sphagnum moss, it's just completely taken over, then I probably would be doing something about it. I'd probably then just change over the sphagnum moss. But then more importantly, I'd just probably look at what conditions I'm keeping my plant under to sort of figure out why there's been such a proliferation of algae growing in my sphagnum moss. Can you reuse sphagnum moss? Definitely, you can reuse sphagnum moss. Should you reuse sphagnum moss? Now, that's a decision only you can make. You can sterilize your sphagnum moss, but whether you're actually getting it to a point where you're getting rid of all the microbes and bacteria or fungi or any microorganisms that would be in that sphagnum moss is debatable. That's not clear. You're probably not going to get rid of everything. So if re you're reusing sphagnum moss that's been used for another plant that, and at that point, that sphagnum moss did acquire some microbes, when you sterilize it, it's not quite clear whether you're actually going to get it to its sterile state. So that's that's a risk you're taking. But yes, you can definitely reuse sphagnum moss. You can use boiling water to reuse your sphagnum moss. So just get some sphagnum moss that you've used for another plant, put it in a container, get some boiling water, shove your boiling water there and let that sit until that water is cool and you can reuse that sphagnum moss. You can also use a solution of hydrogen peroxide to sterilize it and in the same light you can use bleach. When you're using bleach make sure you're taking all the appropriate precautions to protect your skin, protect your eyes, protect the fabric of your clothing. You also need to make sure that you adequately rinse out the bleach. Moss pole extension or chopping. When you propagate or chop the plant that's been living on a moss pole. Can you add the propagations back into the pot that's been living in leka? 
this is one of the great disadvantages of growing your plants in Lekka actually. It is a very difficult to put cuttings back into the mother plant if you're growing your plants in Lekka. It's so much easier if you're growing your plant in soil. All you need to do is burrow away, shove it in there and it's fine. In Lekka, it's not quite so easy. I have done it in the past and invariably I find that I have to sort of just decant everything place that cutting in place and then put the lecker back in because it is so problematic. So if that's something that you're wanting to do, that's just something that you want to remember that it's not going to be as easy as it was when you were growing your plants in soil. The next question is about chopping. When you chop your plant that's been living on a moss pole in lecker, what do you do with the top bit? Do you have to reroot it? When your plant has been living on a moss pole in Lekka, ideally you've been keeping that moss pole moist and you've got the root system that is within the pole itself. So you can get that top cutting and put it directly in the Lekka and those roots are actually going to sustain the plants and you're going to have roots growing into the new Lekka. I've done this with my golden ivy. If you check on the video that I've linked above, you'll see how I did that for that plant and the bot, the top part of the plant, which I then put in another pot with Lekka that rooted really well and is now just a standalone plant. And that's the plant that I've got living back there. So it is possible to do, just bearing in mind that you do have to take care of your moss pole. Another way of doing this is instead of immediately chopping your plant, you can air layer your plant. So you can put a bowl of sphagnum moss or whatever propagation media you want and just attach that to a point where you know area roots are going to emerge from your plant. And eventually that bowl is going to fill up with roots and when you chop your plant, that plant, that one at the top is now ready to go into its own pot with a root system already established. So air layering is definitely a way to go if you're planning in advance and you don't want to risk the top part of your plant actually going downhill when you chop it and remove it from the bottom part. Have you experienced rot with plants in Lekka on a moss pole? Any plant can experience root rot. So if you're just talking about root rot from the base of the plant, that can happen. And I have experienced that in the past. And that's only because I was not managing my reservoirs properly for that particular plant. But was it as a result of the moss pole? No. And I know some people have talked about stem rot because the stem is up against the moss pole. I have never experienced that before. So that's, that's not an issue for me at all. So if you're managing your reservoir properly. And when you water your moss pole, you're letting your moss drain before you put it back in your reservoir. So you're not getting your reservoir to be very full because the nutrient solution is coming from the moss pole, then that shouldn't be an issue at all. Let's talk about watering moss poles. Do you water the moss pole, the Lekka or both? When I'm watering my plant that's on a moss pole in Lekka, I will water the moss pole from the top and that ensures that you've got that moss pole moistened from the top straight to the bottom throughout because if you're not watering from the top to the bottom you will be getting dry patches and you don't want that. But I also do have nutrient solution in the reservoir. So it's an issue of managing the nutrient that's in the moss pole and the nutrient that's in the reservoir. So when I water my moss pole, I water my moss pole and let it stand until all that nutrient solution has drained out of the moss pole. And I know that's not going to go into my reservoir. I will then fill up my reservoir up to the level at which I want it. That ensures that I'm not having my reservoir level being too high because if it's too high, then my plant is completely going to be submerged in that nutrient solution and that will risk root rot for my plant. Do you add the solution to the cash pot or directly to the moss or both? I water my moss pole, let that drain, and then I fill up my reservoir to make sure that it's at the level that I need it to be. What role does gravity play? Gravity obviously plays a role because when you're watering your moss pole from the top, 
that is go gravity is actually going to send that liquid down to the bottom. It's not the only force at play. The sphagnum moss is going to get moist because it will, once you water one part of the moss, it goes to the next part and the next part and the next part, but gravity definitely has a role to play there, yes. Which option dries out faster? I'm not sure what you mean here when you say which option dries out faster. So I'll kind of address this in the way I think. If you've got a moss pool that's made purely of sphagnum moss, I have found that this dries out faster than the moss pool that is a combination of sphagnum moss and tree fern fiber. That's just anecdotal evidence on my part. That's what I have found in my practice. But also if you've got a thinner moss pool, that will dry out faster than if you've got a thicker moss pole. And then of course it depends on your external conditions. So if you're living in a country that's really, really hot and has got very low humidity, then the chances of your moss pole drying out really, really fast are, are much higher than someone who's living in an environment which is a bit cooler and has got a higher humidity. But then if you mean which dries faster, the sphagnum moss or the leka, well, yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't even know, actually. I, Does the moss pole suck up water from the plant? The moss pole will not suck up water from the plant because whether you're growing your plant in soil or semi-hydroponics leka, you are not actually packing the moss pole all the way to the bottom with sphagnum moss. If you're growing your plant in soil, you're probably filling the bottom part of that moss pole with potting mix. That's usually what a lot of people do. And if you're growing your plant in leka, you're probably filling it up with leka or you're just leaving it void like I do. And the reason you're doing that is because if you do put your sphagnum moss all the way to the bottom and you're growing your plant in semi-hydroponics, that sphagnum moss is going to suck up all your nutrient solution. And if you're growing your plant in soil, it is going to remain moist for a lot longer. So if you water your plant and you've got your sphagnum moss all the way to the bottom, that sphagnum moss is going to hold on to a lot of that water, which will then predispose your plant to root rot, whether you're growing your plant in soil or leka. And that's why we don't put sphagnum moss all the way to the bottom. So if you're not doing that, then that issue doesn't arise. I'm always worried that watering my moss pole will somehow disturb the semi-hydro setup since the top of the leka or pond should be dry. When you've growing your plant in semi-hydroponics using whether it's leka or pond, you have a graduation of moisture level in your pot. So if you've got your pot at the bottom, it's wetter and as you go to the top it becomes drier and you will have your sphagnum moss at the top and you've got your plant growing up there. So if you've got your reservoir at the bottom, that sphagnum moss really doesn't have anything to do with the pond or the leka and it's not like you're watering your sphagnum moss all the time and if you do that water or nutrient solution will simply just seep down to the bottom. And as long as it's not overfilling your reservoir, that shouldn't be an issue at all. Whether the leka at the top is dry or not is really neither here nor there. And it probably will not remain as wet as you think it will because you've got that air at the top and that's definitely going to dry that out. So I wouldn't be too worried about what's happening with the leka or your pond at the top of the plant. What kind of nutrient solution should I use for moss poles? The fertilizer for semi-hydroponic or mineral fertilizer, the one that's used for soil or organic fertilizer. If you're growing your plant in semi-hydroponics or if you're growing your plant using leka or pond or whatever substrate that is not soil, I highly recommend that you're using the same nutrient solution that you're putting in your reservoir to water your moss pole. This is what I do. I mix up my nutrient solution that I'm putting in my reservoirs and that's the nutrient solution that I pour directly into my moss poles. And that means that if I have a little bit of that solution seeping into my reservoir, that's not an issue. I'm not going to have a problem of that diluting my reservoir. So if I put water in my moss pole and that seeps down to my reservoir, that dilutes my reservoir. It completely changes the makeup of the nutrient solution in my reservoir and that is going to affect the growth of my plants. So that's why I highly recommend that you use the nutrient solution that you use for your reservoir, use that for your moss poles as well. 
How do you keep your moss poles moist without diluting your nutrient solution too much? So again, exactly what I've said in the previous question, if you're using the nutrient solution that you're using for your reservoir to water your moss poles, that does not become an issue. That's what I suggest you do. What about Koya poles? Are they as good as moss? Coconut coir is the fibrous material that's found in the middle of a coconut fruit. And you've got the fiber aspect of it and you've got the pith. The pith, it looks a little bit like peat moss. Most of these coir poles that we find sold in the stores are made out of the fiber. And that fiber does not absorb water. They're good to use as poles. All they will do is actually provide support for your plant. That's all they will do. Whereas your sphagnum moss pole, which are the moss poles that we use, which are the moss poles that I use, absorb water. So when you're watering your moss pole, you provide water and you provide nutrition. And what that allows is your area roots to grow into the sphagnum moss or tree fern fiber or whatever absorbent substrate you're using for your pole and those area roots have got access to water and nutrition and that gives that plant an additional boost and your plant can grow bigger and stronger not just deriving support but also deriving nutrition so those coconut fiber poles that you see in the shops they're great for support and in my mind nothing else they're not going to do the job of a moss pole and that's the difference.